Welcome everybody to my course vlogs where you'll be able to follow my casual rounds of golf and we're currently here in Sydney, Australia. Today I'm going to be showing you the 10 holes of twilight golf I played at Moor Park Golf Club which is the conveniently placed downtown Sydney. It actually has a beautiful driving range, uh, very popular, amazing city skyline views, very affordable. Um, it's actually owned by the Centennial Parklands by the New South Wales government and one of 16 government owned courses in the New South Wales metropolitan area and the closest one of those to the CBD. The fairways are pretty tight, the course plays long, surrounded by trees. I'd imagine similar to something like Pinehurst where New Zealand's own Michael Campbell won the 2005 US Open. There's quite a few bunkers whether they're fairway or around the green on the course and I'll do my best to find as many as I can. So anyway, let's get on and see how I went with my 10 holes at Twilight in Sydney. I'm straight into my normal warm-up routine of uh, casual golf, which is a couple of swings on the first tee, no time at the green, uh, putting green and no time on the driving range first. I've probably uh, been watching a few Tiger Woods hype videos in the lead up and a part of me thinks that this could be the day that I go under par. I'm using five wood off the tee, no tee because I didn't have one in my bag. I find the club face, not the center of the club face, and I spray it way out to the right. At least I got some sort of contact. Here's a flyover of the first hole, uh, straight up par four, slight dog leg to the left, pretty tight fairway, uphill, big bunker on the right protecting the green, pretty flat. And here I am lining up my second shot, taking my medicine, just taking eight iron and deciding I'll put it back if I can over the trees and back onto the fairway. Play a pretty nice shot there, I'm pretty happy with that. The guys on the green who were playing the other hole, slightly mocking me, uh, were also impressed by it. I've got sandwich in my hand for my third shot in. And I'm hoping that I can get up and down and still make a par. Good contact, but I put it out to the right. And I suspect my alignment was off. So now I'm reaching for the wedge to try and uh, just get it on the green. Get a putt. Start to feel good about the first hole after playing most of it down the right hand side. Gotta be happy with that. Fly it onto the green, roll it up. Pretty close to the flag. Putt for bogey here to try and get away with a five. Got my Puma polo and cap on today and rocking the white shorts. The old white shorts golf look. And that putt is going to come up short and that's going to be a classic double bogey opening of the uh, casual round of golf. Yeah, we all know that feeling. Onto the second hole. Part three, fly over. And uh, yeah, nothing too difficult about this hole. Take a wedge, step up, and see if you can put it on the green. So I'm just looking for a spot to tee it up. Um, again, no tee, which is not ideal. And I'm not focused on my alignment. It's just terrible down the right-hand side there. Now if we watch a replay of that and pause it at the top, my alignment is just way off, way to the right. And as I come back down and make contact way behind the ball, a good few inches behind the ball, just not a good result. So I've really got to work on that alignment going forward. I think my second from 90 meters now for a pretty Tough lie. I just try and hack it up towards the green and do a half decent job that I don't find the green. It's off to the right. So now I've been going right all day, which is not right, it's wrong. And I'm just trying to get it back up and have a putt for bogey. Actually, quite a nice chip there. Get onto the green and I'll get a look for bogey. I'm actually playing with my friend Tanum and I'm trying to teach him because it's his first game ever. So there's quite a lot going on. I'm trying to set up the camera to record. Trying to give him some tips, which is probably not ideal, as uh, I'm, no, I'm no one to be handing out tips. And um, try and focus for the round as well at the same time. 
Uh, so do have some sympathy for my round. There is quite a lot going on. And that's going to be another double. Double, double start. As we head to the uh, third hole, a par four risk reward, dog leg left, quite short. So you can either rip a wood and try and go over the over the uh, left edge of the trees there, up towards the green, or play safe with an iron. And uh, being four over through two, there's no playing safe as I reach for the five wood again off the um, off the ground, and I still don't have a tee, which is not ideal. And I'm doing the old classic. Walk around the tee box and look for a, somewhere that you might want to hit without focusing at all on where I'm trying to hit this ball. Still not happy here. Indecision. Now we're going over to the left. This time. Nope. Back to the middle. And now we're happy. Now we've got five wood. Alignment off to the right again. This is a major issue for me, clearly. And I skank it down the left-hand side. Terrible shot. To take my medicine again and just hack it out onto the fairway. At this stage, you might be wondering why this video is not called Way to Watch Me Melt Down at Moore Park. Five iron from 211 meters out. That's a pretty good shot. The trees blocking the green. I've just got it up to the right hand side of the uh, of the green and just a little bit short, but that's um, that's a pretty good result. From there, I'm able to take a wedge and chip it onto the green. Came out quite a bit short, but that's uh, at least giving me another putt for bogey to try and get out of here with, um, without making a complete mess of the hole. Putt's on its way, but I've given it too much speed and it's raced way past the hole. I'm going to have a long double bogey coming back. And you guessed it, I miss it. So it's a tap in for a triple, and that's a bit of a horror start to the round. But the good news is we have a, a par 5 to bounce back in the flyover here. It's a long par 5. Uh, it's going to be a three shotter, way, way up to the right, uphill to the end here. So it's tee shot time on the fourth hole, par five, and I'm thinking time to go full Tiger Woods here and send a drive, big bomb down the middle, having slipped to seven over after three holes. But unfortunately it's going long and left and, and into those trees. And I'm forced to just take a 7-iron and punch it out back onto the fairway. Here I'm taking 5-wood from quite far out, third shot. I'm trying to go up over these trees blind. And I don't get enough height on it straight into the tree trunks. It's going from bad to worse here. Just trying to run it up towards the green. Make a mess of it. Finally, with a wedge, I chip it up onto the green. That's a double bogey, unfortunately. So the fifth hole is a very high elevated par 3 from about 145 meters. Very picturesque, you can't see from the flyover, but amazing views um, back towards the city of Sydney. It's a great opportunity to take in the view. But quite a long wait on the tee here for some slow players in front of us. Um, a lot of time. I'm pulling a 9-iron here from 145. I'm pretty much straight at the green. Uh, I just got it a bit too nicely and it's gone over, over the back of the green. Um, I chip it back onto the green. Apologies for my poor photography setup here, but it was a very steep bank. It's going to give me a putt for par. Uh, you might be wondering how the shot traces actually come about that you saw there on from the par 3 tee shot. Well, it's actually a bit of a uh, miracle. I draw them by hand. 
<laughs> Kidding. No, they're very good, the shot choices. Anyway, I tap that in for a bogey. Moving on to the sixth hole. A pretty short par five. Uh, sloping right to left, and they say that the key to this par five is a good tee shot to set up the second shot into uh, into a pretty open green. Now I'm taking three wood because, I, as I said earlier, I don't have driver in my bag. So I'm just going to go ahead and rip a three wood as hard as I can, aiming up over the over inside that tree line. And I smash it right over the trees and down the middle of the fairway. So after milling between clubs for a while, between going with the five wood, which five wood, which I think would be too much club, I end up pulling five iron and just trying to hit it hard. I hit it hard, all right, but straight at the guy who's playing in front of us, and I have to yell four at him, gives him a good wake up. All I can do from the trees there is chip it out, and uh, this was just after my playing partner had done his best to kill me um, by hitting it at me, as you'll see here in slow motion. Watch for the ball to go flying past there at the bottom right of the screen. So I was pretty <laughs> frustrated, and unfortunately, once I managed to chip it out and not get it on the green, uh, you see it in full speed. So yes, anyway, now I'm playing my fourth back into the into the par five, and I play a pretty nice chip and get it up onto the green. And I've got a really good look at par here. Uh, my putting is just so bad. If there's any tips out there on how I can improve my putting, I'd love to hear them. Bogey it is. Seems like a good time in the round just to take a quick break. Checking on my scorecard. What's uh? What do you think you could have improved for uh, the next uh for the next next hole? It's just hard. There's no warm ups. Um, coming in cold, ducked a few off the tee. Hit start stop. Been quite slow. A couple of groups in front holding holding things up a bit. So triple night for golf though in Sydney. On to the seventh. It's a long par three. Although I think it's playing slightly shorter off these tees. Um, and it's considered quite a hard hole. But, you know, I've, you've got to remember that I've never played this course in my life. And part of this vlog concept, I think, which will be quite interesting for the viewers, is that, you know, watching someone play a course they've never played before. One of the most amazing things about playing golf at Twilight Australia in New Zealand is just the sound of the birds that you can hear in the background. And that might be the sound of a birdie putt you hear coming up because I've absolutely flushed that tee shot with a beautiful look here for birdie. So after taking excruciating long time to line up this birdie putt, I proceed to miss it comfortably, but it's a tap and par, so that's always a good result. And we'll move on. Moving on to the eighth, a pretty long par four, up, plays uphill. And they say the key to this hole is probably staying out of the trees or the bunkers, and maybe just hitting the middle of the fairway. Just something that I've done once so far in this round. So chances are probably slim that I'm going to be able to do that again. And I think one of the things actually going forward is I'm not going to do these vlogs again unless I'm really dialed in um, and concentrating about what I'm doing, just less focused on getting the camera set up, etc. Anyway, I'm ripping three wood. And that's going to have you head in for the woods and not for the first time today. But I did actually get out of jail and I just take my medicine once again. Actually, I lie. I tried to pull seven iron up over the trees there, and I didn't get enough, enough elevation. And this is actually after chipping out again. So playing my fourth uphill with a wedge. So 
so I've got 15 feet for bogey and it's probably a very slim chance given the way I'm putting that I'll make it I've probably got more chance of being offered a scholarship to Julia comes up well short unfortunately so I've got this for double bogey and I make a mess of it but for some reason it's always easy just to tap it back in from behind the hole what is that why is it always easy to do that all right folks so we've reached the ninth it's a short par four reachable if I had driver and could go for it uh, but instead I'm just gonna have to take three wood and give it a wallop and see how close I can get Trying to finish strong here on the ninth. I'm wondering at this stage if it might be the last hole, if we might get one more in if his light fades. And bang, we're heading for the trees again. <laughs> Not for the first time today. <laughs> like the Augusta Pine Straw. They just chip it out back onto the fairway. Which leaves me a wedge in towards the flag over the left hand bunk uh, left side bunker there. Probably my best shot of the day. I just kept really still. That's what I need to do moving forward. I'm just slightly left of the flag, but on the edge of the green. I've got a one, two, three. Must be a par putt. That's <laughs> the flag step because it was running well past, but it's an easy bogey. And we're on to the tenth, which is a, a probably the signature hole with the clubhouse there to the left, and a short par three to finish for this twilight round of golf. I chuck it. I'm so frustrated. I throw the club. That just about sums up this day. This twilight round of golf. I play an okay wedge there, up just short of the green for my second shot. That's what I needed to do the first time. From here, I just chip it on. Clubhouse there to the left. It's twilight evening. Beautiful sound of the birds. Really, really enjoyable course. In great condition for a public golf course. Um, the round of golf cost about 40 Australian dollars, so not too bad. And from there I took putt. Finish the rounds. Right folks, that's going to do it for the front nine of Moore Park Golf Club in Sydney. Uh, there were some highlights in there, but a lot of lowlights. And uh, I'm definitely going to come back, play the back nine, record it. Um, so look out for that soon. Uh, in the meantime, as you can see from the scorecard, just the one fairway and minimal greens and rags. So yeah, back nine coming soon. It's supposed to be really good. Stay tuned.